I'm calling on realtors to follow through on lowering their commissions to protect home buyers. Treat Americans like suckers. He has said that over and over again. Recently, I shared a video on this channel about the proposed settlement that the National Association of Realtors made that came out of their class action lawsuit talking to real estate agents in that video. And it sparked a firestorm of emotions. That video was pushed out to buyers and sellers, consumers all over the country. The backlash was immediate and fierce with people saying things in the comments like, my realtor didn't do anything. You guys are liars. You are lazy. Boo hoo complaining that you work so hard. You make way too much money for the things that you do all of the comments. The proposed settlement was talking about how real estate commissions will be handled going forward. And Corrine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, had this to say. Let's take a listen. Settlement in the National Association of Realtors case that effectively ends the 6% 6 commission on house sales. You know, Biden administration made a lot about fees and costs mm -hmm. and consumer costs. Has the White House been tracking this, this case and any reaction to the settlement? Uh, so I can't speak to the settlement. Obviously, you're talking about junk fees and how important it is that we... Yeah, I'm not calling yeah. this junk fee. I'm just okay. saying that you guys have been focused on consumer fees, consumer costs. Yeah. This is kind of yeah. in line with those things. We're seeing that effectively the 6% commission is going away. Wow. Junk fees? Really? It's payment for services rendered the same way that you would pay for any other person who provides professional services. Speak more broadly to what the president has tried to do, right? He's trying to make sure that consumers uh, don't get taken advantage of by corporations. He's made that very, very clear. That's why we speak to junk fees. That's why there's a competition council. And that's why we try to find out, find out ways to save Americans money. You know, we're talking about billions of dollars billions of dollars that Americans have to pay because of these junk fees, because we don't, we see cooperation, cooperation, not passing on, uh, their, uh, you know, their, uh, their wealth, what they've been able uh, to incur, uh, to, to the consumers. So look, it is very important. The president has always said he's going to stand up for Americans, uh, and uh, he believes corporations obviously should pay uh, their fair uh, their fair share here, and uh, and not not treat Americans like suckers. He has said that over and over again. I mean, how dare you call them junk fees? What a total crock of. Sh I guess one could argue that your salary is considered a junk fee. When the White House press secretary refers to real estate commissions as junk fees, it displays an astounding lack of understanding of how this industry works. To call it a junk fee raises a lot of questions. So for example, if you decide to go get your hair cut and colored at the salon, are you gonna say that the hairstylist is charging you junk fees for providing the service that you're paying for? What about if you have an attorney represent you in court? Is that a junk fee? Or what about when you call the plumber at 10 o'clock on Christmas morning, right before your entire family comes over because your toilet is backed up? They're going to come out. They're going to provide a service. They're going to charge you accordingly. Is that considered a junk fee? This isn't about hurt feelings or defending our honor. This is talking about a fundamental understanding or a lack of understanding, I should say, about how the real estate industry works. So when Corrine says that they're fighting for us not to treat the American people like suckers, I'm so glad to know that that's what the government thinks of the American people, that you're he nothing but a bunch of suckers. Again. The DOJ has been trying to insert its nose into a topic that it really knows nothing about. They're throwing around terms like violating antitrust laws and price fixing. They're making it sound like every single real estate agent operating in the industry is unethical, corrupt, and a liar. The class action lawsuit alleged that NAR's rules, which are in place in order to be fair, to not violate any fair housing rules, and to be totally transparent, they alleged that those rules led to this idea of price fixing, which I wholeheartedly disagree with. They argued that buyer representation was obsolete. It was no longer needed. No buyer needed to have their own representation. And so let me be perfectly clear, the narrative that the mainstream media has been pushing ever since this news broke is extremely misleading. It's all clickbait. They're just trying to get you to read their articles. Nobody subscribes to the newspaper anymore. So the only way they can get you to click on their article online is to use the sensational language, this emotional language, 
that indicates that the sky is falling and the world is coming to an end. That's how they get you to click on their article and read it. Some of these headlines were ridiculous. So here is the gist of what happened in case you weren't paying attention. NAR was sued along with several real estate brokerages by a group of home sellers in Missouri who basically said when they agreed to sell their house and hired a real estate agent to represent them, and they signed the listing agreement agreeing to pay X number of dollars when the home sells. Half of it or a portion of it would go to the agent that represents them and a portion of it would go to the agent that represents the buyers. The listing agent sat down, said, here's what I will do for you. Here is how much I will charge you. Would you like to hire me? And they said, yes. They sold their house. They paid the fees. They got what they asked for. And then later they're like, you know, I don't actually like that after all. I know that I agreed to pay it, but in retrospect, I really didn't want to pay it. And now I'm angry about it. So let's put together a class action lawsuit so that we can all say we didn't know what we were signing and that we got our arms twisted behind our back to do something that we didn't want to do. Well, NAR fought it in court along with several other real estate brokerages, and unfortunately they lost. They were planning to appeal. They saw how many billions of dollars it was going to cost. They decided to offer a settlement. And as of the time of this recording, it has been proposed, but the judge still has to sign off on it and say yes or no. Mainstream media had a heyday. They were shouting from the rooftops that 6% commission was dead. Buyer representation was obsolete. Housing prices were going to fall. This was going to change everything about the real estate industry. The more outlandish the claim, the more likely they put it in their headline. I would really love to talk to these reporters and find out where they get their information. Do you honestly think that house prices are going to come significantly down? Do you think, I have a feeling they may, but not because of what you think. They think that if the seller no longer has to pay the fee that the buyer's agent is charging, that that means they're spending less, so the house price will come down. Let me ask you this. If you're going to sell your house for $500,000 and you find out that you only have to pay 3%, 4% instead of the 6% that you were planning to spend, are you going to reduce the cost of your house accordingly? No, you're going to try to keep that extra profit for yourself so that you can use that as the down payment on your next house. Are you not? Is anyone out there going to say, yes, let's discount the price of my house because now it's not going to cost me so much. My prorated property taxes were not much as not as much as I thought they were going to be. The buyer didn't ask me to pay a home warranty or have my septic tank pumped. I should reduce my purchase price because my out-of-pocket costs were less than I thought they were going to be, said no one ever. Right up until about the 1990s, buyers typically did not have their own representation. They saw a house that they liked. They would call up the listing agent, the agent that represents the seller. And they said, oh, I drove by this particular house. I think it looks amazing. Can you come show it to me? This is exactly what I did before I got into real estate. I drove down the street. I went, Arr! saw this cute little house, called the sign in the front yard. And I said, any chance you could meet me over there in like an hour? I know it's very short notice, but I'm in the neighborhood. The listing agent dropped what she was doing, came and met me at the house. She opened the front door. We walked inside. I looked at the living room. Then I looked at the kitchen and I said, this is it. This is the one. This is the house that I want. I love it. She said, would you like to see the rest of the house before you make that decision? And then when I sat down with her and said, okay, Let's write an offer. What should I offer? She said, the asking price is, that's what you should offer. Do you honestly think she was going to help me write a lower offer? She represents the seller. She does not represent me. Her job is not to get me the lowest price. Her job is to get the seller the highest price, the best terms for the seller. So then one day buyers finally got wise to this. They thought if I went to court, I would have an attorney and the other party would have their own attorney and they would be duking it out, but it, they wouldn't have the same attorney running back and forth representing the plaintiff and the defendant. So we should probably have our own representation as well. I need someone looking out for my best interests. I need someone trying to get me the best price on the house, the best terms, the lowest down payment, the least amount of closing costs, giving me credits back from the seller if they will agree. I'm trying to get the best deal for me. The seller 
seller's agent is trying to get the best deal for the seller, let's let the two agents duke it out and hammer out all of the details so that everybody can compromise and come to an agreement that works for everyone. Now back to the way the commissions typically work. The seller decides, I want to sell my house. They can sell it for sale by owner if they want to. Nobody says you have to hire a real estate agent. And by the way, there is a difference between a real estate agent and a realtor. A real estate agent is the name of the job. A realtor is someone that is a part of the National Association of Realtors, which is an association that abides by stricter rules and guidelines. We have a code of ethics that we agree to adhere to. And I do know people who've been kicked out of NAR because they violated the ethics agreements before. So you have to hold yourself to a higher standard to be in the National Association of Realtors. You don't have to join NAR unless your brokerage says that you are required to in order to hang your license with them. But we do it voluntarily because we want to elevate the level of professionalism in our industry. So you decide to sell your house, you decide that you do want to list it with a professional real estate agent because you believe in the value that they provide and the expertise that they have that you don't. So you sit down with a bunch of people, you interview them and you say, what are you going to do for me to get my home sold? I know there is this perception that there is price fixing, that it is 6% and that Nobody ever discounts that. It's just not true. There is what is considered to be reasonable and customary in your particular area, but what is reasonable and customary in Northern California is not the same as what is reasonable and customary in Savannah, Georgia. The amount that people pay in commission varies according to where you live. Are you in a densely populated urban city? Are you in a rural area where everybody has miles of land between them and their nearest neighbor? Historically, it's somewhere between five and 7%, I would say. Although I read a statistic in 2020, it dropped to the lowest it had ever been at 4.9%, at least the lowest it had been in like the last 20 or 30 years. Now in this comment right here, this person says, you say that there's no price fixing, but I've asked all these people to drop their price and they never do. So it's not true. Again, it is not true. Now, let's say you're an IT analyst for software companies. That is your chosen profession. And you know what the going salary is for that position. You go and apply for a job with so-and-so who says, I would love to offer you this position. You're going to be amazing. And we're going to offer you $20,000 less than what the going fair value is for this salary range. Would you take it? You would probably say, well, no, hold on a minute. I know that the salary should actually be this, but you're offering me this. I can't afford to take that. I need you to offer me what is fair. And if the person says, sorry, can't do it, we don't have it in the budget, you are free to walk away. You do not have to agree to that price the same way that they don't have to give you the higher price. It is all negotiable. Now, many, many, many times when I have represented somebody who had very little equity in their house, they just moved in a year and a half before, ended up getting divorced, had to sell the house. They don't have a lot of equity in their house. Did I discount the commission? Yes, I did. I did it because I knew there just was not a lot of margin there. And I didn't want them to come to the closing writing me a check. They weren't gonna make a big fat profit, but at least they weren't going to have no money to show for it at the end. That was my decision, that was my choice. Would every realtor do that? Maybe, maybe not. I can't speak for what other people would do. I can only tell you what I would do. I love working with military clients. My husband is retired Air Force. Typically when I did a listing presentation to a VA seller, I would say, thank you so much for your service. And as a thank you for what you do for this country, I'm gonna discount my commission. That was something I chose to do. Not everybody does that, some people do. It's also my decision to say, this is what I charge. Either you agree to pay the fee or you don't, and that's totally fine too. But I'm not gonna discount my services because you are cheap, but I'm not gonna agree to discount my services just because somebody doesn't wanna pay it. I know what I do during the transaction. I know how hard I work. I know the value that I bring to the transaction. And I know that when I list a house, I'm able to sell it for more money than if they were to sell for sale by owner, which then, covers the cost of the commission most of the time. In fact, the vast majority of the time. So if you're going to sell it yourself for 200, but you list it with an agent, you can sell it for 250. 
The $50,000 spread covers the cost of the fees involved for hiring somebody who has local market knowledge, who knows how to do an appraisal to come up with what fair market value is. It's called a BPO. I don't do a CMA. I do a BPO on every property. When I go on a listing appointment tomorrow, I'm bringing a BPO with me. I'm not going to do price per square foot and say, oh, this is what your house is worth. I do all of the marketing for the property. I do all the advertising. It's all out of pocket. I do all of that stuff. I take all of the risk because if the house does not sell, I'm the one that's out the money, not the seller. Because the agent takes all the risk, yes, we charge accordingly. Not only do I want to get reimbursed at the end, but then I also want to make money to put food on the table to put a roof over my head. If I'm able to help you get your house sold for more money, and I'm able to earn a good living for myself, I don't see the problem there. You're all acting like it's immoral and illegal to want to earn a living. But do you expect to get paid at your job? Yes, you do. Do you expect to go to work, do your job, and collect a paycheck every two weeks? Guess what? I don't. I go to work, I do my job, and I cross my fingers and hope that I get a paycheck. But it doesn't always happen. Sometimes the buyer's loan gets denied at the 11th hour and the whole deal falls through. Sometimes the seller's home won't appraise for what we are under contract for. And now the seller decides, well, I'm not going to sell my house after all now. I digress. I get fired up about this. So the seller decides, I want to sell my house. They decide to hire a real estate agent to represent them. They interview a couple of different people. They pick the one that they think is going to do the best job. They sign on the dotted line. Part of the agreement up until the proposed NAR settlement said, I am going to pay you X percentage. And then of that money, a portion is going to go to the brokerage that represents the buyer. Now that number was not set in stone. We never said it must be 3%. It must be 2%. It must be 4%. It's really up to the seller. Again, it is what is reasonable and customary in your area. In my area, it is not 3%. I will tell you that right now. But what do sellers want? Buyers. And what do buyers want? Houses. If the seller is able to pay the buyer's agent's commission, they can get more buyers to come and see their houses. If the buyer has to pay their own commission, and I'm not saying that they should not, it makes perfect sense, right? Each person should in theory be able to pay for their own representation. If you're representing me, I should pay you. And if the seller is represented by somebody else, they should pay them. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but here's the deal. If the buyer has to pay their down payment and their closing costs, and now they have to come up with money to pay their agent as well, that is money that comes out of the total pot that they had set aside to buy a house, which means I can no longer look at a $350 $50,000 house. Now I'm going to look at a house that costs less. If I have to pay my agent out of my own pocket, most of the time, that money is hard to come by, especially first time buyers. They are not just sitting around with oodles of cash in the bank. And again, I'm not saying that I disagree with the way that it's always been done. This is ever since I've been in the real estate industry, this is how it's worked. Does that mean that it was right? Not necessarily, but I see why it was done this way. If you want the buyer to be able to afford a more expensive house, they have to have lower expenses. Otherwise, I'm paying for these three things. That means I can afford less house. Now, one could absolutely argue that the buyer is really the one paying those fees anyway, right? Because if the seller does not sell their house, there is no money changing hand, period. And if the buyer is the one financing all of this stuff in order to put an offer on the house, I have heard people argue very convincingly that the money is actually coming from the buyer anyway. So what are you getting all upset about? I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but I can definitely see both sides of the argument. The biggest change that is coming with this proposed settlement is that with the NAR settlement, they said they would no longer disclose in the MLS, the multiple listing service, how much that commission was going to be. So before I could log into the MLS, I could say, show me all of the houses between this price and this price in this particular area that have at least four bedrooms and at least 2,500 square feet that are going to this particular school district. That is a very common list of criteria that a buyer would give me. This is what we want. This is where we want to be. This is how much we're willing to spend. And we want to make sure our kids go to this school. So you log into the MLS, you do that search. I did not ever filter it down by commission. It would say 
on this house, this is the commission that's being offered. On this house, this is the commission that's being offered. But these people that say we are steering our clients to buy more expensive houses or houses where we will get paid a larger commission is so unbelievably offensive to me. I want to ask you, when was the last time you bought a house? Do you honestly think that someone comes to me and says, I want to buy a house. This is my budget. This is how many bedrooms. This is how many square footage. This is the school district I want to be in. I'm going to just let you choose. You pick all of the houses for us to look at. Sound good? No, that's not how it works. The buyer gets email lists of properties that are currently on the market or are coming soon that match their criteria. The buyer looks at all the pictures. They look at it on a map. They read the description. And then they call me and say, can we go out and see houses on Saturday? These are the ones I want to go look at. To say that the agent is steering them toward the ones that get a higher commission is ridiculous. That's not how it works. We give all of the properties to the buyer and the buyer tells us which ones they want to see. Sometimes the buyer calls me and says, I found this one on Zillow. Why didn't you send it to me? It's not because it was only offering a half a percent. It's because it was not in your price range. It's because it sold six months ago and Zillow hasn't updated their website. It's because it is currently under contract with somebody else. It is too small. It does not have the number of bedrooms that you said that you wanted. It did not match the criteria that you gave me. And therefore, the system did not send you the email. Never, ever, ever do I or anyone else I know who is reputable, go through and narrow them down based on how much we will get paid. When we join the National Association of Realtors, we are adhering to the code of ethics. And article number one says, when representing a buyer, seller, landlord, tenant, or other client as an agent, realtors pledge themselves to protect and promote the interests of their client. This obligation to the client is primary. Basically, what I do is I look out for the client's money as though it were my own. And in fact, it is more important than my own. With the new settlement, they don't want to disclose that number in the MLS anymore. It does not mean that the seller can't pay it. It does not mean that the seller can't say, hey, buyer's agent, I am still offering you a commission. They just can't advertise it in the MLS. Now, to me, this opens up a whole can of worms of potentially being able to violate fair housing laws because the seller might say, well, tell me about the client. Oh, are they a certain type of person? I don't think we should offer them a commission. I think we should say no. Is it this type of a person? Ooh, I think we ought to offer them 3%. Like I can see this having some very unintended consequences. When the amount was disclosed in the MLS, it was extremely transparent. Every single agent would be able to see and the agent would then disclose to their client. If you write an offer on this house, this is how much I will be compensated. I don't get to keep all of it. I get paid this chunk at the closing. Part of it, usually around 30% of it or so, goes to the brokerage that I hang my license with. Part of it goes to taxes. If someone referred this client to me, I may have to pay a referral fee as well. I certainly don't get to keep all of that money. Boy, I wish I did, but that's not how it works. And so the buyer became well aware of, if I sell this house, this is how much money I would make. If I sell you this house, this is how much money I would make. The buyer didn't say, I know I really like 123 Main Street and that you'll make more money, but I'm going to buy this one instead because it's my favorite house. They don't worry about my feelings when they buy the house. They buy the house that's right for them, regardless of what the compensation to me would be. Now, is every real estate agent the same? No, of course not. There are good ones and bad ones, just like hairstylists and teachers and auto mechanics and attorneys and surgeons and people who paint houses for a living. There are people that are really good at their job. They've been doing it a long time and they have a lot of expertise. They're easy to work with. They are good, kind people and they charge fair prices. There are other people that are shysters. This is true in every single industry, not just real estate. And before you come at me and tell me how unfair it is that the seller has to pay this commission to the buyer's agent, Remember, the seller's goal is to get as many buyers to come see your house as possible. Because if we have 100 people come see your house, the chance of it selling is much greater than if we have three people come see the house. The percentage of people that will love your house out of 100 is much greater than out of three people that come see your house. It's in the seller's best interest to have as many buyers come see the house as possible. And if you are a homeowner now, think back to when you were a first time buyer. Do you remember? 
how much money it felt like you were spending. You were saving up the money for the down payment. You were saving up money for closing costs. You probably even asked the seller for a credit to cover some of your closing costs because money was scarce. I've worked with so many first time buyers that can barely come up with money to do a home inspection, even though I've told them how supremely important it is to get a home inspection on that house prior to buying it. You need to know exactly what you're getting, what kind of condition it's in, and you can't find that out after you close. It's too late. You're the owner. There's no legal recourse for you if you wait until way down the road. You need to do it before you sign on the dotted line and that house becomes yours. So if it was that difficult to come up with that kind of money, now imagine that you also had to pay for your own representation. Again, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just saying that it's difficult for buyers to come up with even more money. When you were the first time buyer, you did not pay your own agent, most likely. So you benefited from this system in order to get into the position where you are now. Unless you represented yourself, and that's totally fine. Not everybody wants to do that. A lot of people don't know what they don't know. They don't know how to determine what is fair market value. They don't know what they should ask for. They don't know what they should have the seller pay for. They just don't know. They've never done this before. This is not what they do for a living. This is not their area of expertise. They see the value in hiring somebody who does this every single day, day in and day out. And they've chosen to align with a realtor who will represent them. There is nothing wrong with that. The fact remains that in order to get into the housing market that first time, it takes a a lot of money and not everybody just has a hundred grand sitting in the bank. Some people do. And if that's you, that was amazing. Good for you. I wish that I had a hundred grand sitting in the bank when I bought my first house. I had to do it with the down payment assistance program that was being offered by my city. But the fact remains that to get into the housing market in the first place is very expensive. It takes a lot of money and especially for a first time buyer, it is scary. If I were doing it completely unrepresented, and I thought my, my total cash to close was gonna be $20,000 and I actually found out it was gonna be closer to 30, I would have a heart attack. And right before the closing, I would be calling my parents, sobbing hysterically, begging for money because otherwise this deal was gonna fall through. I can't imagine doing that without anybody telling you all the way along what to expect so that that doesn't happen. So for all of you that are just tearing up us realtors, I just beseech you to not begrudge me for the way I choose to earn a living. Yes, I want to earn a living. Yes, I want to be able to put a roof over my head and go on nice vacations and take time off and have a good quality of life just like you do. But mostly I do it because I like helping people. I am a realtor because I like to help people achieve the American dream. I believe that everybody deserves to own a home if they want to. I believe that everybody should try to build wealth through real estate. This is the best and easiest way to make money just for living. If I rented an apartment and I spent $2,000 a month on rent, which is not unreasonable where I live, it's shocking how expensive rent is. If I spent 2000 bucks a month on rent, when I move out of that apartment, I have nothing to show for it. If I buy a house and I spend $2,000 a month on my mortgage, after a couple of years, if I sell that property and I can walk away with a $50,000, $100,000 profit, I made money for living in my house. That's it. I was doing that anyway. It's just that now I own the house instead of renting the house. I believe that everybody, every American citizen should have that opportunity. Now, what about you people that say realtors didn't do anything like this guy that says my realtor didn't do anything. Now, what about the buyer's agents? I know a lot of you said, oh, the buyer's agent didn't do anything. All they did was show up and unlock the front door. That may be true, but there are a lot of other agents who work far harder than that. Here's what I want to ask you. How did you find that realtor? If you go to these websites and you say, oh, look at this pretty house. I would like more information on blah, blah, blah. Your information gets sent to a bunch of agents who pay a lot of money to receive those leads. They call you immediately. They try to get you an appointment to see that house. You say, uh, okay, tomorrow at 1230 will work for me. They meet you at the house. You like the house. They say, would you like to write an offer on it? To you, all they did was show up and unlock the door. They do so much more than that. But you didn't bother to look for an agent before going house house hunting. You didn't do the initial due diligence to interview people and find out how they are different. What makes one person better than the other? Why do I think that they're better? If all you did was say, uh, tell me more information about this house and they show up and unlock the door, why are you mad at them that they showed up and locked the door? When a buyer comes to 
to me and they hire me before we start house hunting, let me tell you all of the things that I personally do. I help them get pre-approved with somebody reputable who's not going to deny their loan three days before closing. I tell them exactly how much money they should expect to have out of pocket. I help them find a home inspector or a roof inspector or a pool inspector or somebody who's going to come out and look at that property before they sign on the dotted line and it becomes theirs to make sure that they understand its condition. And if it needs to be fixed, are we going to ask the seller to make those repairs? After all, it fell into disrepair while the seller lived there. Shouldn't they be the one to fix it rather than you? I'm going to make my best recommendation of what they should offer for the offer price in order to get the seller to accept it the first time and not make a counter offer. I'm going to tell them all of my best strategies for getting their offer accepted when there are multiple offers and they're competing against four other people. Most importantly, I'm going to make sure that they are never in breach of contract because they missed a deadline. They were not paying attention to the details in the contract. I will not let that happen. I'm going to make sure every step of the way. Do you understand that we are now over our financing contingency? If you were to cancel at this point, you would be in breach of contract. Do you understand what that means? If you want to cancel, now is the time to do it. A buyer who is completely unrepresented or who is working with someone brand new and inexperienced who doesn't know any of that stuff, Listen, you have to do your due diligence and hire a pro the same way that a seller does to hire someone to list their house for sale. Buyers have not done this historically because they were not usually the one paying for it out of pocket. So maybe they felt like, well, I'm not paying for it. So does it really matter? Yes, it matters. So are you really mad at us as a profession or are you more mad at yourself? It's kind of like going to McDonald's and getting a free burger off of the dollar menu. It may not be that great, but hey, it was free. But if you really wanted an amazing burger, you probably should have gone and found a place that has an amazing burger. And maybe it was somewhere else. Maybe it was a bigger burger. It was juicier. It was grass fed and grass finished and all of the things. But if you don't take the time to try to go find that burger and decide if it's going to cost more than free, am I willing to pay for it because I will get a better quality experience? Why are you mad at the agent? And if you filled out that form and you don't like how many people called you and you felt like you were being hounded by agents after you filled out that form, there's a very simple resolution to that. Stop using those sites and stop filling out those forms. Because if agents were paying thousands of dollars a month, to get leads and the leads stopped coming in, the agents would stop paying that money because there's no return on investment there. I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars a month to get nothing in return. What if instead you did a Google search? You said best realtor near me. You went and you looked at their YouTube channels. You followed them on Instagram. You looked at their TikToks. You read their blog. You went to their website. You read their Google reviews. What if you actually actively investigated who you were going to work with in advance instead of just saying, I'll work with whoever shows up to unlock the front door. If you want quality service, you go out and find it. And if you don't think that you need a professional realtor, you don't have to hire anybody. I want to say that over and over again. No one says you have to. You can absolutely represent yourself. Now, I know that I could paint my own house and I have before. It's not something that I'm incapable of doing, but do I want to do it? Can I do as good a job as somebody else? Is my time valuable enough that I'm willing to pay somebody else to do it? And by the way, it's July, so it's a hundred and bazillion degrees outside. Would I rather pay somebody else? Maybe I would. And if I would, and I'm willing to pay them, I don't say they are greedy, evil, horrible, unethical people for charging me money to do the job. Why? Why do people think that about realtors? I just don't get it. I don't get it. My electrician is not unethical. My hairdresser is not a shyster. The house painter is not a cheater and a liar and a greedy simply for charging money for the services rendered. So commissions can still be offered in the future. They just will not be offered through the MLS. And it may very well be that the seller says, I don't want to pay a commission to the buyer's agent at all. The buyer should pay for that themselves. Fair enough. That's your decision as the homeowner. But let's talk about what these ramifications really will be. I feel it's not just a minor headache. This is a massive step backwards. This is the law getting involved 
and telling us how the business should be run when they really don't know what they're talking about. Ever since 2020, when home prices skyrocketed across the country, not just here in Savannah, not just in Florida, not just in Idaho and Texas and all of the places that people move to, it's been very difficult for buyers to find houses. There has been not enough inventory in markets all across the country because I have a very large group of real estate agents in my community and they're all saying the same thing. There's a lack of inventory. There are not enough houses on the market. People don't want to sell because interest rates are now 7%, but when they bought their house, it was at 2.5%. Why would they want to sell a house? And even if they make a big profit, go buy something new where they're going to be 7% interest rate instead of 2.5% interest rate. I, they'd rather just sit on the house and wait, wait for interest rates to come back down again. Not only did the home price prices go up, but the interest rates went up as well. So this made it even more difficult for first time buyers. They came in, they wanted to compete. They scrape all of their money together. They're willing to buy the house, even though it's more expensive now than it was a couple years ago. They're willing to buy the house, even though interest rates are now 7% instead of three, like they were a few years ago, but they still can't get the house. Why? Because these big institutional hedge funds are coming along and buying up entire neighborhoods and turning them into rental properties. I saw a headline the other day about how the real estate industry is turning toward the Amazonification of real estate, meaning Amazon does everything at scale, right? Most people buy one house at a time, maybe investors buy a handful at a time, but they're talking about doing this at scale where you're buying a neighborhood at a time. A developer comes in, they build up a whole bunch of crappy substandard townhomes. They sell the entire neighborhood to some company out of Chicago who buys the whole neighborhood and doesn't sell them one at a time. They put them up as rental properties. Then people move into these rental properties. They're spending almost as much a month on rent as they could be spending on a mortgage for something fairly comparable. This is happening all around where I live and it's driving me crazy. These neighborhoods are popping up and I think, oh, finally, we're going to have some housing that first time buyers can afford. Nope. There's a big sign in the front once it's all done that says, for rent. I've seen at least four of these go up in my immediate area. So I want you to ask yourself, what's in it for the government to have a nation of renters? If you have people that don't own property, that don't have a lot of cash, that can't afford to stand up for themselves and fight back, like what's in it for the government if we become a nation of renters? Something to think about. And for those of you that think the house prices are gonna come down as a result of this commission change, I've been working with buyers many, many times where they drove by a for sale by owner. And so I called the house on behalf of my client and I said, tell me about the property. Are you willing to pay a fee to the buyer's agent? Because he's not paying a fee right now. And if you are not willing to pay my fee, Somebody has to pay me. I don't work for free. This is not a pro bono situation. If you're not willing to pay it, which is completely within your right, I'm not going to force you to do it. But that means I'm not bringing my ready, willing, and able buyer who has money to spend and is already pre approved. The buyer is always trying to negotiate a deal. Of course they are. And the seller is not discounting the house because they didn't have to pay a commission. They're still asking what they feel is a valid current fair market value. They're not discounting it because they didn't have to pay a real estate agent. However, from the buyer's perception, they should offer less than that because they know that the seller doesn't have to pay the commission. Does this happen every single time without fail? No, but I've seen it happen over and over and over again. And so if the seller decides to sell FISBO or you hire a real estate agent, but you say, I'm not going to offer a co-op compensation to the other side, again, perfectly within your right to do so. But then you're going to have a lot fewer buyers come and see your house. Then you're going to be upset that people are not coming to look at your house. You're not getting offers. Why? Because you did not offer a compensation compensation to the buyer's brokerage. So the buyer ha now has to do it. The buyer says, well, if I have to pay your fee, then I have to reduce the amount of money that I it was prepared to spend to buy the house. So now instead of buying a house at this price, I have to lower the price in order to compensate for my additional out-of-pocket fees, which means I can't uh, I can't afford your house anymore. Sorry, I would have loved to have made an offer on it, but I can't. I have no problem asking my buyer to pay my professional brokerage fee. I know what I do for them. I know the value I bring to the table. The way that I find my clients is through 
my YouTube channel. They watch me, they hear me speak, they get to know me, they feel like they know me. They obviously trust me when they call me and say, we've been watching all of your videos, we want you to help us buy a house. I usually don't have to do a lot of arm twisting to get them to pick me over another realtor. They've already chosen me because of the way that I promote myself with my YouTube channel. So I'm not afraid to tell them, we now have to sign an exclusive buyer brokerage agreement. Maybe no one's ever asked you to do that before. As of mid-July, you must. Before you go look at any homes at all, you must have a signed buyer representation agreement with one particular agent. And this is how much I'm gonna charge you for my services. I have no problem having that conversation. But whether they're financially able to do that is the question. How much money do they have sitting around in the bank that they would be able to come to the closing with that additional money? Most likely it means they're gonna to have to reduce the purchase price. But again, with this article that said house prices are going to come down, listen, that is not how it works. If someone decides to sell their house FISBO for sale by owner, they say, I know what my home is worth and I'm gonna save the money on a commission. I live on a busy road. I'm just gonna put a sign in the front yard because I get all of this traffic driving past it every day. It will be super easy for me to sell it myself. I get to keep all the extra money. A, nobody says, I think my house is worth 400,000, but because I'm not paying a realtor, I'm gonna discount my price and I'm gonna sell it for 450 instead. Nobody does that. But here's what happens with the buy side. The buyers call them directly. Usually they are unrepresented. They do not have an agent that is helping them. They go directly to the homeowner because A, they don't have good credit and they can't get a mortgage. So they're asking if the owner will finance it. B, they're saying, will you do a rent with an option to purchase, a lease with an option to purchase? Because I don't have enough money. I don't have a down payment. I don't have very good credit. Would you agree to something like that? Or they say, I know you're asking 400, but you're not paying a realtor's commission. So therefore I'm going to offer you 450. So the seller does not want to discount the house just because they're not paying a fee and the buyer does. The heart of the matter goes much deeper than real estate commissions. It's truly about the American dream. The belief that anybody who is a citizen of this country and wants to own property should be able to do so if they want to. As realtors, we are not just brokers of transactions. We are out there fighting every day for this dream. I am fighting for people to become homeowners, to build wealth, to build generational wealth, to become investors in their own right and own multiple properties. I want that for every single person who wants it for themselves. And I, for one, will continue to fight for this, even if the government thinks that Americans are suckers. Making realtor lives great again. I'm Karen Carr, and I approve this message because I wrote it. So of course I did. <laughs>